Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Bart here from uh, Harkema Metalworks. Um, welcome back in my shop here in the north of the Netherlands. It's uh, getting a little bit colder. It's uh, the 1st of February 2021 right now. And I thought let's make a new video. I thought about my goals for 2021 and um, also my goals for this channel and uh, seeing where it goes and one of the goals is uh, making uh, uh, more updates about what I do here in the shop and with ud updates I mean I do a lot of uh, uh, different metal works uh, machining but also welding or blacksmithing or more artwork or sheet metal work all kinds of stuff and for some nice projects I do a video but not all of them I do share a lot of my progress uh, and my daily shop adventures uh, on Instagram, uh, Bart Herkema. But um, yeah, if you don't follow that, then I thought it would also be nice to share uh, one time every month a little uh, Metalworks uh, shop adventures. So this is the first part. Um, I plan to do that every month. And um, yeah, this, uh, in this video I just want to talk and share and show uh, what I do here in the shop and what happened to me uh, or what I did this last month. So first it's maybe nice to uh, look back uh, at 2020 and uh, yeah, I just um, moved in this shop in January 2020, so um, uh, one year ago. And uh, yeah, a lot of things happened. I'm, I'm feeling sometimes I'm taking it slow or maybe even too slow. But on the other hand, if I look back one year ago, uh, what happened, what machines that I got, what projects that I did, then uh, yeah, I think it was a, a nice year for me and um, a lot of uh, adventures here in this uh, little shop. Um, so almost, uh, I think in a few days, from now, uh, I, I, uh, but then one year ago, I put the walls up, uh, put a little ceiling here in the shop. So I have a separation of the metal work, uh, grinding stuff, welding stuff, and here the machine side. Um, so that worked out uh, great. Put up some extra lights and uh, still haven't painted the walls. You have to get your priorities. Um, working with the machines was more priority for me than painting um, or maybe more fun, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, uh, only one year ago I moved in this shop and uh, yeah, it just um, give you guys a, a quick uh, update on the shop tour. But most of you know the shop already. You see the Okuma Johnson Shipman 540 surface grinder that still needs work and I've got a new machine I will talk about it later Alba A1 shaper and my more cleaning site or for measurements or desk work It's a little challenging how much machines you can still fit in here and still be able to walk around. The Shell Blind Twins, the 102 VM and the 13 and the Decal GK21 for engraving. English wheel and optical comparator that I need to repair and sell. And Clarkson surface grinder that, uh, not surface grinder, tool and cutter grinder that I sold. And this is the sheet metal side pull marks for the sheet metal work. Bender, bead roller. And as you can see, this part of the shop needs reorganization. So one thing that I like in this uh, shop adventure is the process um, of, uh, of learning new skills. I think that is one uh, reason why I do so many kinds of uh, metalwork. 
Uh, I really love to learn it. I'm not a master at one, but I, at least I try to be good at all. Um, and uh, the downside is, is that you have so many machines. But um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm getting there. But I like the, the process of learning. I did have some uh, background in uh, machining. I, I, I went to school for machining. I, I worked six years in an aerospace center as a tool maker or actually instrument maker, uh, making measurement uh, tools and uh, calibrating them. Um, but my dad or uh, my dad also uh, did a lot of metal work uh, and my granddad was a blacksmith. Uh, and in that family there was a lot of uh, creative people so that's what I combined is uh, the creativity of my mother's side and the metalwork uh, of my father's side and uh, yeah that's uh, how I ended up here. Um, long story short um, yeah all kinds of metalwork and I like the process of learning and for 2021 I wanted to do some more uh, designing and uh, drawing uh, so I got a Fusion 360 on my computer and I started to play around with that a little bit because yeah um, I did make some nice projects like the bending machine or the uh, the belt grinder or uh, the beat roller and a lot of people were asking oh, do you have any drawings for it but yeah I didn't so uh, maybe I can make some more drawings in the future to uh, to share. And I also wanted to do some more uh, 3D work, um, not only with the computer, but also CNC. And to start that, I bought a 3D printer. I thought that's a good uh, step forward. Um, and uh, yeah, also for some uh, prototyping. Things that I did was making a, a design for a solid tool post for the Okuma and uh, I wanted to see how it uh, worked on the machine and uh, yeah uh, it will be made from uh, cast iron but uh, before I start turning it and uh, working on it I wanted to see um, how it looked but also if it would uh, fit the machine and fit the uh, uh, parrot turret head that I will mount on there it's a quick chains four-way uh, turret head um, so yeah, that's the, the progress of the Okuma and the other thing that I'm working on is mounting the DRO. Uh, I started uh, drilling in the cross slide and that was the first time for me. Um, I really hate drilling in uh, quality old machines um, or at least I hate it when I buy a machine and it's drilled full of holes that are no, no use anymore. Um, and especially if they're drilled uh, uh, all um, on an angle or not 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 great um, but uh, yeah until now I always uh, found a way to not drill into the machine but for now there was no other option but um, yeah I am um, now on the list of people who drill into quality machines I'm not sure if I'm proud of that but um, yeah, I had to do it, so I took the uh, took the compound or the the cross slide. I mean, I took the cross slide off, put it on the shoveling, and uh, drilled some holes uh, to mount the DRO. Uh, I did quite some testing for the DRO. Uh, that is also uh, interesting. Uh, I watched a few videos from uh, especially Robin Rinzetti, and he talked about mounting the DRO, taking your time, doing it right doing it right the first time but also taking your time and he talked about the Abbey error uh, on the cross slide it's an uh, angular error the further away it will be from the uh, rotation point or the measurement point from the point from the tool in rotation there will be an error and I did quite a lot of uh, measurements because there was a lot of discussion online about it um, uh, many people said uh, no, don't bother it's uh, not worth it it will damage the, the linear skills more if you put it on the chuck side but um, yeah others say no if you really want an accurate machine uh, and accurate readout then you need to put it on the chuck side so I thought okay uh, let's uh, stop the discussion at least in my head and uh, I spent three days measuring all with different um, forces on the tool, different um, uh, 
uh, radial actual uh, axial forces um, and uh, seeing what the difference would be if I mount the DRO on the chuck or on the uh, tailstock side. So uh, yeah, that was an interesting and I will make a separate video about the Abbey error. So here you can see the printed 3D prototype of the solar tool post with the parrot four-way turret head and also the holes drilled for a nice cover and for the DRO mountings. I spent quite some time scraping this area to get it nice and flat for the mounting of the sensor and after that I will mount the DRO Z-axis on the back of the machine and with the nice good DRO and solid tube host and this nice parrot turret head it will be a really great machine to be used and of course I will keep the original compound slide and can replace that if I need to uh, turn tapers but for most work I will use the solid to post. So with shop adventures you sometimes can be very happy or very frustrated um, but uh, there are moments that you can be both at the same time and that's a little uh, story, little adventure that I wanted to share uh, that happened to me last week. I bought a Dekel S1 at a Dutch auction called Troostwijk and the, I was on the lookout for a, a, a little bit upgrade on my tool and cutter grinder. I had the Clarkson MK1. It's a nice machine but I thought I wanted to have a little bit more. The Dekel S1 is a really nice machine but it's not often sold and um, yeah, uh, in Germany there are a little bit more than here in the Netherlands but if they are sold they are quite expensive. And then this Dekel S1 showed up at the Dutch auction. I thought okay let's uh, give it a try. Uh, I had about a max that I wanted to pay for it. Um, and uh, yeah, after a few biddings uh, I, uh, I won and I got the machine. And um, But on the machine itself, on the pictures, uh, I didn't see it up front, so it was a blind bid. Um, there was no indicating head or whatsoever and yeah, I thought okay, uh, it was a good price, um, but for the machine alone uh, and I needed to uh, be on the lookout for um, other tools or the things that I need to run the machine. When I came there, there was a cabinet uh, standing next to the machine and that cabinet uh, was sold before the machine at the auction. It was like one hour before the machine. And the cabinet was closed, it was sold uh, as it was closed, there was no key. So the buyer uh, uh, who took a gamble and uh, had no idea what was inside. The cabinet itself was quite ugly, but yeah, you never know what you're buying. Um, I don't know what somebody paid for it, but uh, yeah, the, the cabinet was sold. I got there and I was very happy with the machine, but then I saw the cabinet and I uh, had a little peek through the door and uh, with the flashlight and a camera and um, yeah, I saw collets and um, grinding wheels from the, for the, the grinding machine. For the so that was very frustrating that I knew that uh, these were sold I think quite cheap and I needed all of that and it was standing next to the machine but I had to leave without it. Um, it was last Wednesday and I thought, okay, how can I manage to, to deal with this first mentally? I mean, um, trying to stay positive, starting, trying to stay happy was quite a challenge. Um, when you're buying a machine like this, it's, a, it's so nice. But um, yeah, after seeing that cabinet, you, I, I know you guys feel me with this one. 
seeing that cabinet there having to leave without it was really really frustrating so that was a, a little bit mental challenge i asked the guys from the auction uh, uh, if they had any contact info and of course they couldn't share it i understand that but um, they saw on the schedule and they wanted to share that that it would be picked up um, on friday so two days afterwards I thought about it for a moment and then I thought, okay, I have to go back. I have to try to meet the guy who bought it and try to see if he wanted to sell it. So I went there last Friday. Again, it was two hour drive. Um, I was there uh, one hour before the auction, uh, this, this uh, time frame would open and uh, uh, one hour early, but only after 30 minutes, the guy showed up. Um, at first he was really not friendly friendly I tried to talk to him but just no answer and he tried to open the cabinet and um, yeah I thought okay I'm not sure what will happen um, but we'll see so I tried to talk to him a little bit more um, and uh, what I brought was my old uh, Shaoblin 102 um, desk lathe um, that was not in the best condition and needed a lot of work um, and I bought that one for a good price of, as a restoration project but I thought okay if I want to convince the guy then if you buy something at an auction and you leave without something that's just a feeling that that's not working so I wanted to uh, trade something and maybe also I, I, I brought some some cash with me and uh, seeing if that combination would do the trick. So I showed him the lathe, I showed him uh, some cash or I made him a good offer and finally, finally, finally he said yes. So I got the cabinet and after that I was really happy because the cabinet was really full with grinding wheels, all indicating heads, it even came with two indicating heads um, mountings for uh, yeah all the accessories and the tools that you can think of are there and um, yeah of course also the cabinet it's not a really nice cabinet but uh, it does function it does work and it does store all the tools the machine itself is it was not in a really uh, um, yeah I would say not in the best shape um, uh, but uh, as, uh, when, when looking at it but um, the, the guidings were fine and um, yeah after a, a little bit of cleaning it uh, it already looked a lot better so I will do some more cleaning on that um, but that uh, will be a future project <laughs> I, I do realize how often I say that will be a future project in my videos but um, that's one thing I want to focus on something that I'm working on and I'm now focusing on the Okuma getting that ready solid tool post TRO and after that one is functional then I will enjoy cleaning and uh, maybe even a little bit restoration on this uh, Decal uh, S1 and then uh, try to uh, to work with it a little bit um, I'm lucky that uh, Stefan got us winter has the same machine and he already shared some videos where he used it or explaining the machine um, and I also got the manual with it so uh, yeah I'm really looking forward for that so yeah that was my uh, little adventure from last week um, from um, yeah uh, very happy to very frustrated at the same time to uh, I think very lucky and um, yeah that's uh, that house goes um, there are so many times that I'm not lucky, but this time I was and uh, yeah, I took the, the gamble and uh, went back and uh, yeah, it uh, it paid off. So um, yeah, new machine in the shop and um, <laughs> new projects for the future. Yeah. So I had to take some parts off for transport. And I will give that a good cleaning. But... This is the cabinet and now you will see why I was so happy. 
that I was able to buy it. Don't know if you guys can see it, but a lot of collets, a lot of tools, two indicating heads, a lot of grinding wheels and arbus, and even more tools. So about uh, future goals, uh, let's talk about a few goals that I set for 2021. I did think about that and uh, yeah, I thought let's share it uh, maybe more as a reminder for myself. Uh, one of them you already heard is um, doing these uh, shop adventure videos and working on my channel a little bit more. And uh, those who know me, um, you know that I'm already uh, also a teacher. Um, I teach at uh, a sport education uh, university. I teach there mostly martial art, but also other uh, kinds of sport or more uh, how to teach. So that's my normal daytime job. I do that three, di three days a week. Um, I work a lot from home these days because most of my lessons, uh, unfortunately, are online due to COVID. And um, yeah, I um, uh, also made a little project for that, uh, some woodworking, uh, because I wanted to have a standing desk. Um, sitting down all day was not the best uh, option for me. Uh, I like to move a little bit more than, uh, than that. So I made a nice standing table and doing a lot of computer work lately. So that's why I'm also happy to do that three days a week and not five days a week and uh, working with my hands on the other times. Um, that gives me some uh, some nice um, combination but also some freedom because uh, yeah I can do this shop uh, a little bit in a combination of hobby and also as a of course as a business. Um, I do need to pay the rent, I do need to pay for the machine, the maintenance, the tools. Uh, so I do need to work for customers and uh, earning some money with that. But um, when I thought about my future goals, I also thought about combining teaching and metal work because I love both and I love explaining stuff. And when I was working a lot online these days, I thought, okay, hey, why not make some more um, instruction videos or teaching videos about metal work? Um, maybe lathe work or milling or um, yeah, making knives or whatever, I don't know yet, welding. Um, but make a few series about different uh, metal work uh, instruction videos. Um, different levels from beginners to maybe a little bit more experienced. So that is one thing that you will see this year on this channel. And I'm also working on a website. It will be uh, Harkema metalworks.com is not online yet but it will soon be so for other future goals in this shop i thought i want to do a little bit more collaborations i'm working mostly alone but i do like the internet uh, or instagram or youtube community there are a lot of creative people out here and i'd like to do some more collaborations I already have a few planned for this year, so that's really cool and I will uh, do a little bit more. So if you have an idea and if uh, you wanted to do a collaboration with me, then uh, please let me know and uh, we'll see what uh, we can come up with. So a little bit more teaching, a little bit more collaborations and having a little bit more fun here in the shop. And that last part is also important for me. Um, I did notice the last few months uh, from last year um, the projects that I did were alright but it was not always fun it was more making money and uh, yeah doing the things uh, I, I want to do it my way want to make quality stuff uh, stuff that I'm still proud of but I want to have a little bit more fun and I'm lucky enough that I can do that here in this shop uh, with the combination with my normal job. So a little bit more uh, fun projects, a little bit more collaboration and a little bit more teaching. So um, 
yeah, make a mental note for myself right here and uh, see how that will uh, work out in 2021. So for now guys, I um, hope you liked this little concept and I hope you enjoyed this uh, little talk. Um, more machining will uh, follow up soon working on the Okuma. As soon as I stop this video, I will start drilling the cross light and uh, I'm not sure if I'm looking forward for that. <laughs> hey guys, stay safe. See you next time. Bye bye.